Welcome to the first episode of So You Want to Be a Star in the Music Business. Um, and the funny thing is, even though we're using that question, that is not what we are talking about. We want to educate the people who are aspiring to be a star. See, Kevin and I are managers in the music industry. And we know a lot of people who want to be stars and who are desperately trying to figure out what they need to do to overcome the obstacles. Uh, it's about time we hand you some information instead of hiding it. Uh, first step is you've got to know that most major stars had a major record label with lots of money and somebody at the top there with a lot of power who made them a star. 99% of you have none of that behind you. Clive Davis is not walking up to your door and saying, I'm going to teach you how to be a star. That would be nice. It would be great. But if you don't have that, you need to overcome those obstacles. You can't just sit around saying, gee, I like singing, and I can put out a YouTube video. So we're hoping over a series of videos that we're going to be able to give you some information to help you. Uh, whatever age you are, if people who are 55, 60, who just all of a sudden want to join the business, as difficult as that is, or actually next to impossible, and people who are 16 years old. Uh, American Idol and X Factor are not the only way to do it, and they're not necessarily the best way, and we will explain why later on. And the funny thing is, just as many people want to be a star, the people who are stars are trying to figure out how to maintain their star status. So they still need education, and we feel like we're the experts to give you that information. Very important. Uh, how do you maintain a career that lasts beyond one year? Even if you had a hit. Uh, one of the great stories, LL Cool J uh, wrote in his first book that his first check that he received was like $55,000, and he went crazy. Mm -hmm. And his mother saved him. She said, if you're going to buy a BMW, go buy it, but you're leaving $10,000 or $8,000 with me. I'm not going to let you touch it. And what he realized almost a year later is he had absolutely no money left except for the money that his mother had demanded. That's right. So it's a, and yes, he's had a wonderful career. So that's, an, that's a real exception. But you want to make some smart moves and you want to be able to say 35 or 40 years later, I'm still making a living and doing what I love. So it's not about being famous in one year and then going off and having to work at a Hallmark card shop. And despite the, million things that we can teach in, in one session. The biggest question or the, the first thing I usually hear from people that are trying to become a star, they feel like they need management right away. So I think the, the first thing we need to do is explain the biggest difference between what a manager is, what a manager does, what an agent is, and what an agent does. So first of all, it's just understanding the roles of different people in the industry and which, which one of these people you need to take your career to the next level? And at what point do you actually need a manager? The first thing is an agent is someone who gets you a job. That is not a manager. And almost everybody confuses that. Under California and New York state law, and only those two states, it is illegal for a manager to get their client a job. Now, of course, if you're getting a job that's paying you $100, no court, court officer is going to come after you. So that's not the issue. But the truth is, a booking agent takes a commission. That means you have to be making some money to be worth it for the booking agent to take a commission. A manager also takes a commission. So you, again, you have to be making some money, or why are they working for you? So very simply, if you're someone who is 18 years old, and you're working down the street at a, at a street fair for free, what are you going to do with a manager and an agent? You can't pay them. And yet you want professional information. Well, there is a way to get that professional information, but it's not from hiring your nephew as your manager. 
He can be your helper, he can be your best friend, your uncle who runs a dry cleaning store can help you make sure your bank accounts are okay. All of that is helpful. And your shirts are pressed. And your shirts are pressed. <laughs> but they're not your manager. Just tell them you love them, let them help you, but the day will come that a record producer, a record label, a manager, and a booking agent will come to you you don't go to them. It doesn't happen. Because even if you have some success behind you, you need to put yourself out there so they can find you. And when they find you, you need to be better than the average singer or musician. Better than the average bear. That's it. Uh, for those of us old enough to remember <laughs> Yogi uh, and uh, Boo Boo. Uh, but this is a really important problem. Uh, a lot of people want to be managers, but they have never gone to school to be a manager. They have never mentored with anyone who was a manager. So what do they know to tell you? And if they're not, uh, I, sorry to keep using his name, if they're not Clive Davis's son, who can they connect you with? So you are looking for a manager who can advise you knowing the ins and outs of a business. You're looking for an agent who can find a casino that wants somebody who isn't famous or else to tell you you're not going to get a job right now. Exactly. So we're going to, not in today's class, but we're going to uh, daily, uh, weekdays only, put out a short class and try to take you step by step through the process. Uh, we also want to talk to you about clothes, because if you're going to put out a YouTube video, you can't look like me. <laughs> that won't work. Uh, talk about makeup. Talk about your image. Talk about what music you sing. If you're going to sing Frank Sinatra songs, and you can't sing them better than Frank Sinatra, go enjoy yourself, but that ain't it, kid. Um, and what do we tell 16-year-olds? What do we tell 16-year-olds? that they're going to be ripped off. If they have the talent, they will. So will 55-year-olds. So the more you know, the less chance you'll be ripped off in a major way. There are only four major record labels left in the world. Everybody else is independent. And the internet has not killed music. If anything, it has made it more accessible. All. So how do you use it? Just by using Twitter and Facebook and YouTube doesn't make you a star. We got Justin Bieber. We got a few other people. Soldier Boy. But that's a few. And what is it about them that made them special? Lord knows Justin Bieber did not find Usher. Usher found Justin Bieber. So to sum it all up, you know you need management when there's something to manage. But then the question is, how do you get your career to the point where there's something to manage? And that's where we come in. So stay tuned. Check, yeah, check back with us every Monday through Friday um, on YouTube, uh, MWENT Group. MW Entertainment Group, but we're shortening it as with our website, MWENT Group. Twitter, at underscore... M-W-E-G. Twitter's at underscore M-W-E-G. I am Mitch Weiss. Kevin Curtin, just like the one on the window. And uh, we're going to send a final shout out. Uh, today it's to the family of Whitney Houston, which we are all very saddened for and that we uh, feel the personal loss, not just all the music loss that we, we obviously feel. Um, and on that note, signing out. Adios.